This is a Wool Observatory podcast. Hello, welcome to Star Stuff. I am your host, Cody Half Moon, and today we're bringing back a fan favorite, John Compton. Hey, it's me, John Compton. What up, nerds? And he doesn't even work here anymore. He just came back because you begged us to bring John Compton back. I like talking about space and stuff. What, what do you do now? Um, nothing. <laughs> I'm unemployed. Where are you teaching full time? Nowhere. What are you talking about? <laughs> we have to cut this. You left and you started teaching biology and what at Flag High? Oh, just biology at just, Flag High. But it was that was a temporary contract. AP I don't work and honors. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to go back as a substitute. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Or potentially some Who other arts school. Man. Uh, so you left us for teaching. And today you're going to be teaching them stuff. Yeah. What are you going to be teaching us? Um, you told me. I did. Moments ago. <laughs> That, uh, it that has I was, been in the calendar for weeks. <laughs> I don't read that. Uh, um, that I'll be talking about uh, the formation of the Earth? Yes. Or just about the Earth in general? Not about the Earth in general. We, that's the way to... Uh, just like the, the early stages of the Earth. Yeah, we don't care about the modern stuff. We're not going to get into that. It's way too complicated for early, us. Um, early Gaia development. Like yeah, like first... Um, so we've kind of talked about this on the podcast. We've talked about uh, a little bit a long time ago about how planets were formed in the different, like, rocky to gas to ice, that kind of thing. Sure. And, um, but it was very brief, and we've, we, we've been earmarking this, and someone brought it to our attention a few months ago that we haven't done an episode about it yet. And it was how the sun kind of expels these earth ingredients or planet ingredients and why they're lumped together as they are. And then in relation to that... Uh, how we got to this oxygen atmosphere with the water and the rock and all that fun stuff. So um, start from the beginning. (laughs) Start from the beginning. Okay. So planets being formed in general. Yeah. I mean, so it's it's definitely tied into like the formation of a solar system in general, right? You can't Mm. can't talk about planets forming really without talking about like the formation of their star. Of the, okay. Very easily. Okay. Um, And, you know, so there's just a dust dust cloud out there some hydrogen and other elements mixed in from Mm -hmm. various um stars uh done detonating um kind of spreading their debris out into the gas clouds into the stellar nurseries Uh and then just kind of uh gravity takes over and usually it takes some kind of shock wave uh, to really kickstart things in a in a nebula, so stuff's kind of nearby each other already. Yeah, and but then... it's all it's all just like almost individual atoms at that point, right? Ah. Individual hydrogen atoms, individual atoms like carbon and iron and silicon, or you know whatever's out there. Yeah, um, probably some nickel. Uh oh, I'm gonna go crazy with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch et of elements. Yeah, etc. Uh, and they're just kind of hanging out there um, all around, and they might start to clump together, but usually. It's a nearby supernova will do it where um, the death of a big star kicks kicks the process in place, okay. right? And like really smushes some stuff together. An explosive death, not like... Yeah. Well, I mean, you know... Like most, a white dwarf or what is Well, that? a white dwarf comes from like when a, a normal sized star dies. Right. Right. It gives off its last bit of elements and those go into the hydrogen clouds and what's left is that hyperheated core of carbon. And that's called a white dwarf, that, mm-hmm. that carbon bowling ball cannonball thing but so like normal stars die to seed the ingredients mm-hmm. and then when a big star dies and goes supernova then that shock wave ripples through and can really smush some stuff together and kickstart gravity fast is that how we get stellar nurseries no stellar nursery is just the name for the hydrogen cloud oh yeah so was our sun from a stellar nursery yeah yeah, by definition. I mean, oh, cool. any star needs to have a good fuel source, and the best fuel source is hydrogen. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, so that means our sun is not a what's called I don't know what pop stands for, but pop one, pop two. Yeah. So pop that's that's three. population. So or like what generation of star it is? Okay. Right. Um, and so we would have had to have been a later generation of star uh-huh. to have the elements in us to make the planets. Okay. Right. Got it. First stars to form. Are just hydrogen being it's pure hydrogen, so it's pure fuel. It doesn't 
there's nothing to make a planet out of unless yeah. you want to make hydrogen planet, but that's, that wouldn't work and it would be boring anyway. So who right. cares? Um, so, uh, all this matter starts coalescing faster and faster and faster. The more, um, the more mass it gains, the more gravity it has, the more mass it attracts from that shock wave. Is it already spinning at this point? No, it's just kind of clumping together, okay. uh, like in bigger areas. Okay. So the more stuff it's bringing in, it's kind of a ball shape at first, um, a big sphere. Mm -hmm. And then just by the way that randomness works, something will, it'll have spin in one direction, right? Like one atom will be moving more that way than another way, right? As things are falling in and, and coming together. Okay. And that provides that initial spin. And things are just going to naturally follow that same pattern because it's easier to go with the flow than go against it. And so it's going gonna, it's, <laughs> it's gonna to speed up faster and faster and faster, right? Okay. Um, and then, you know, we've got spin along one axis, right? It's spinning. Well, that becomes the axis of the disk that forms, right? Um, that's how disks work. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> because that's how it works. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I don't know. I can explain it if you want. But, no. It's um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to start coming together into this, this flattened disk shape. Things that are bound together by gravity um, uh, across distances tend to form disks. Things that are bound together by gravity and are touching tend to be balls. So right now we have a, a proto-solar disk, right? Okay. It's spinning around and spinning around. It looks all cool um, and stuff kind of collapses and falls into each other. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, it's going to be the things like hydrogen and stuff like that, the, the stuff that the star wants that are going to be fuel fuel towards the center, right? Um, other stuff is going to be out further out, right? It's going to be um, the iron and the carbon and blah, blah, blah. And it's so probably... It can't turn into fuel? It can't turn it into fuel. Okay. It's just nothing. It just got trapped it. in with the other stuff. Yeah. Okay. And so that kind of sticks out, stays out in this, in the edges of this disc. Well, it's super cold, so it starts to freeze together. And when it's freezing like that, it's going to start clumping. It's cold? It's really cold, yeah. Um, and eventually the sun will form, right? And it'll start to like just um, mess stuff up. Right. <laughs> right. Um, a lot of this freezing things can't can't be frozen anymore we get the loss of a lot of volatiles so anything that can be boiled off or turned into a gas it's going to boil off or turn into a gas but um, that's only close by so um, this debris is going to start clumping together as um, it's rotating around the central point which eventually becomes the sun but we're not as concerned with that part except that it was what helped form this this initial disk okay okay mm -hmm. which eventually becomes like the ecliptic plane the solar system. Yeah, of the solar system. So the, the path that all the planets except, yeah, no, all the planets move on. Except uh, for Pluto. Uh-huh. Oh, I know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the plane that all the planets travel on. You take the little name um, <laughs> tag off and all of a sudden. I mean, 18 degrees off and four chunks. I don't know. Uh, so um, uh, the debris starts to clump together, right? Just by nature um, in the same way that anything clumps together, just gravity. And there's a lot of chaos right now. Things are bumping into each other. The biggest stuff right now is like maybe the size of a pebble, oh. right? Right. It's really small clumps. Humble beginnings. And they'll bump together. And when they bump together, they're going to either smash it apart, um, bounce off each other, or in some rare situations, they're going to stick together. When they stick together, that's a new bigger piece of mass for more mm. gravity. And it just accelerates from there. So, um, Really early on, I mean, we're talking like four and a half billion years ago, right? The sun, the sun, the solar system formed. Maybe a couple hundred million years later, we're getting um, the, the beginnings of the formation of the Earth. So um, it's these pebbles smashing into each other, right? And then um, it really becomes a big competition at that point. The bigger the clump of debris and rock, um, the more it can clear its orbit right? Knock out any other smaller protoplanetary objects, mm -hmm. um, either spit them out or rip them apart or, um, brutal, break them apart. It's, it's nuts. But as things get bigger and bigger and bigger, we sort of reach this equilibrium where things are all roughly the same size, like Mars, Venus, and Earth are kind of the same size for, you know, as far as planets go. Mm. And, um, at that point they're, they're individual, but if early on, there probably were a bunch more 
types of things. And they were either knocked into the sun, knocked out of the solar system, or globbed on. Absorbed. Uh, to, absorbed. Yeah. Um, and we know that Earth had a collision with Theia, which formed the moon. There's chunks of Theia. Explain um, what happened there. Oh, well, so... So first, um, the Earth's forming. The Earth's forming. It kind of happens maybe a couple million, hundred million years later. And what's all in the Earth when it's forming? So a lot of iron, okay. a lot of nickel, or sorry, a lot of iron, yeah, nickel, magnesium, um, carbon, silicon, uh, things like that. So anything like um, CO2, uh, oxygen. Are these heavier things, and is that why they're not further out, or...? Well, so it kind of comes down to, um, is it being, it's, it's the balance between being whipped out like a bolo, right? Versus, um, being pulled into the sun by gravity. Mm. And so stuff that is, um, lower mass can stay farther out without being yanked in. Mm -hmm. Um, and things that are heavier probably were flung out or came back and reached an equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of what separates okay. the sizes. And so... Um, if it was in inside near the sun, inner solar system, and was a frozen body or a gassy body, it just evaporated. Right. It just turned to nothing and just sp spit out like a light year away and it's now part of the Oort cloud probably mm. um, or further. So then the Earth is forming and it is um, like a molten... Is it's really yeah. hot because it's pretty close to the sun? Is that it's not? Idea? It's not hot because it's close to the sun. It's very hot. It's it's super molten. Um, one, there's like this um, heat from the, all the friction. Like every time a new pebble hits, it heats up. Like like when you see a shooting star, that's probably about the size of a grain of rice, and it's hot when it enters mm. the solar system. So like imagine enough of those to form a thing the size of the Earth. That's a lot of heat yeah. every time one little thing comes in. And now it's not just um, friction with atmosphere. There is no atmosphere. It's friction with the surface itself. So it's like ridiculously hot. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, and then they get they get crazy hot. But also very early on, we get um, these aluminum isotopes, uh, which decay like pretty quick. Um, they're super radioactive. It's like aluminum 26 or yeah, something like that. Um, so aluminum-26 will radioactively decay and generate a ton of heat. And the half-life for aluminum-26 is like really, really short. It's like a couple hundred thousand years, which is like nothing for oh. this kind of thing. And so like they're basically um, decaying, 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 and just forming huge plumes of heat inside the Earth nonstop okay. um, at the beginning until all of them have decayed. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, that initial heat from accretion mm -hmm. and then that radioactive heat – um, keeps the earth super, super bubbly hot okay. for like a while. On the, all the way to the surface. All the way to the surface. The whole thing. Whole thing. Okay. Um, and then um, because it's very, very hot, uh, we don't have a lot of initial like um, differentiation of the different um, layers yet. It's just so all we, we don't have a core together. yet. We don't have a mantle yet. We, don't have, okay. we definitely don't have a crust, but we don't really even have a core yet. Okay. Um, it's all just swirl together Molten it's like lava, when, you, when you make like like soup you know and it's all hot and it's all like the same stuff inside but then when you put it in the fridge for a little bit you get that like gross layer on the top oh uh-huh it has to cool down a little bit to get those gross layers mm -hmm. earth needs its gross layer first don't we all <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> and so um uh eventually it does cool down enough right to start to differentiate Okay. And the first differentiation is just mantle versus core. We have iron and nickel right at the core, and then we have magnesium um, and some irony things um, to make a mantle. We don't have a crust, though. We definitely don't have an atmosphere. Um, and uh, that just forms when we get smacked by another protoplanet. Um, and that protoplanet was Theia. So we had just gotten to the gross crust. We and just we got... were smacked by... Mm -hmm. A rogue planet. What was this rogue planet made of? Um, it would have been in similar composition to like Earth and Mars. Okay. You know? So just like an annoying sister. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, and, you know, this probably happened a lot back then. We know that um, the gas giants probably switched places and moved around a lot. What? Yeah, yeah. There's like this whole thing with Jupiter moving around. Uranus moved around. 
a bunch of things moved around until they found their like perfect tracks because this whole thing it was like the Turf age wars. of chaos honestly Turf um, wars <laughs> but it's like all these things were roughly the same size and mm -hmm. just smacking each other ripping them apart tossing them out it happened a lot right pretty much nothing in nature happens without an, an odd amount of violence in the beginning yeah i mean until we just yeah. chill out it was like definitely within the terrestrial stuff it was like beyblades like just spinning bouncing launch each other off. <laughs> you know, like the solar system, it likes to grip it and rip it, you know? Yeah. Um, in, uh -huh. the, in, the, in the middle school bathroom sink or wherever you play Beyblades. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were just bouncing, spinning, like ripping each other apart. Um, uh, and yeah, until things kind of settle. But, um, you know, things move around the orbits at different speeds. So um, we don't know if Earth was lapping Thay or Thay was lapping Earth. Probably oh, it was like they were... I, I was picturing something just coming in from out of nowhere. No, it, it, probably, was it probably formed in the solar another, system. Another, oh. And it probably had a weird a elliptic tenth orbit. Planet? We probably had a weird elliptic orbit. Um, and so things were crossing all over the place. Things had not really stabilized in these nice big circles yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so Thea probably sideswiped us. But because we were partially differentiated, the stuff that came off was just pure mantle material. And that's why the moon has the composition that it does. It doesn't have a lot of iron. It's got a ton of magnesium stuff um, and uh, some feldspar stuff because that's what a mantle would be made of. It's just a piece of our a scar tissue. Yep, um, drifting around us. I think recent recently they they believe they've imaged a blob of Thea left over underneath the surface of the Earth, which is kind of cool. What happened to Thea? Thea just went on its merry way. Um, and well, with a collision, you either get pushed into the sun, thrown out, or globbed on. Some globbed on, but because both Thea and us were probably still really, like, Play-Doh-y, you know uh -huh. what I mean? A bit globbed on, the rest ripped off, and just got probably thrown into the sun. This is like Shakespeare. It's cool. Mm -hmm. This is... Mm -hmm. So there was... It hit us. We captured some of it, and it could have just the rest gone out of orbit and into space. Who knows, yeah. Somewhere. Okay. Somewhere out there. Somewhere <laughs> out there. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, Thea. Sorry, Thea. Yeah. Uh, why Thea? I don't remember. I think it was... Um, you know, I'm such an idiot. My first guys. thought was like, is it Earth backwards? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> that'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's named after some goddess. I don't remember what. Yeah, name. whatever. Um, uh, cool. Anyway, so the moon. Okay. The moon is basically dust for a while around us. Okay. Um, lava Which could have been rings. Lava e hot dust. Maybe. Eventually, it would coalesce into rings. Remember, we go from um, large debris spheres to disks to things. Does that mean that like Saturn balls. one day could just have a moon? Oh, it will. Versus 100%. all of those rings? Yes, yeah, Saturn, like any anything with I mean, rings, the rings are very temporary. I see. Like in the scheme of things. Gotcha. We're, we're at an interesting place because we have the moon and we have rings on Saturn and both those things are not forever. Um, the moon's leaving. Yeah, the moon's leaving. Um, and Where's it going to go when it leaves? It'll it'll be out there. It'll just be tiny. It'll look like a... I mean, it'll, it'll be the same size. Um, it'll look like <laughs> the size of a star in the sky. Is it going to yeet itself into the sun? Or eventually no. will it just float out into the ether? No, it'll reach an equilibrium. It's not at its equilibri like e mm -mm. equilibrium yet. Nope. Um, it's, so we're young Yeah. in this. We are, I mean, realistically, we are. We're like three and a half billion years old. Babies. Like, all these things happen within... A billion years probably right so like a hundred million years after the sun or a couple hundred million years after the sun we get the earth a couple hundred million years after that we get the moon a couple hundred million years later things are just kind of boring um, that's where we're at we get some bombardments right uh no you know we're we're i mean we're in a boring era right now we we are in an interesting era oh we got lasagna we got Bak okay. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we got Bakugan. We got <laughs> um, we got Digimon the Detectives game. We got it is very cats. interesting. As far as these are great. The universe though, it's a, you know we're doing awesome. Awesome. Yeah. The, the, there's like there's definitely a time period. I think it's called the Boring Billion, where just nothing happens with the planet. That sounds nice. Yeah, it sounds peaceful, right? Like like and it got to take a nap. Came so, <laughs> well, uh, then tectonics happened. 
Okay, so tectonic. So, so we oh, have man. we have mantle and core. Mantle and core and moon and or dust. Dust. It eventually coalesces in the moon. We got the moon. Great, love it. See one we of the other it. podcasts for the moon. My favorite thing. He did one too. Near Earth. We did one oh. on the podcast. Love it, love it so much. But um, Earth is just starting to get a super thin crust, tiny, tiny thin crust. Because it's getting colder. As it gets, as it cools okay. down, right? The radioactive um, decay is like um, tapering off, slowing down. Things are able to cool and reach an equilibrium. We have a nice um, iron core. We have a nice magnesium rich um, mantle. Uh, we've got this crispy, crispy crust forming mm. of silicon type things. Mm -mm -mm. Um, but it's still ridiculously hot. Um, there's no way we would have an atmosphere. There's no way we'd have water. There's no way we'd have cats. Um, mm. You just can't handle the heat. Um, so not as good a time. Less good. Less good. Yeah. You could cook a lasagna like like that, though. Like, <laughs> like man. It'd be a little crispy. It's like when you bake cookies and it's like, oh, you know, 30 minutes at Right, and it's done degrees. at 11. Do it at like 2,000 degrees and it's done in like 10 seconds. That's true. You know? <laughs> Cooking um, tip. Yeah. Unexpected. Pro tip from John Conta. <laughs> um, but it's the same it's the same thing. So okay. um, eventually it starts to cool down. And um, we do get uh, some bombardment at some point. Um, the late, Another thing. The late heavy bombardment. You know, things are still accreting. Things are still building. Stuff in the, like, in the same orbit as like hitting us. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it still happens. Like that's, that's what a meteor shower is. Right. Um, or shooting stars and stuff like that. So, um, you know, things accrete all the time. But we're, we're starting to get a lot of that. And it's beating the earth up. And it kind of like, it turns it to lava again. Again. Yeah. We lose our crust and our mantle. We don't super lose the crust. We just beat it up and pools of lava form everywhere. Mm. Um, the moon does take a, a big chunk of that beating Thanks, um, for us. Which is why the back of the moon looks like pumice. But the, the near side is smooth-ish. Really relatively smooth. The, the back looks like looks crazy. Really? It's like a sponge. How do we know? Because um, people took pictures when they went around but it. But it's real dark. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, when it went... Okay, I'm, I'm with you. It's not dark <laughs> during a new moon. Yes. Yeah. The dark side of the moon does not have anything to do with... The, that's radio silence. Yeah, it's, it's called... It's a different it's thing. It's the term radio dark. Radio dark. See, it's a very confusing term because in my mind it just means dark. But, but radio is still a form of light. We're not going to break me today. <laughs> okay. Radio, radio is just a, a color of light that our eyes can't see. Um, but like equipment can. It's like x-rays. It's not and a color. It is. Radio is a color of light. Yeah. But it's a color of light that our, our, our eyes never adapted to see because like why would they? Watch the spectroscopy episode with Haley Osborne. No yeah. kidding. Did we talk about the, the light, the two slit thing in that one? Uh... The double slit experiment we yeah. talked about in another episode. But okay. Then the uh, season one episode one or season two episode one, our first video one. Our first video. That's right. We did. Haley did spectroscopy and she mentioned radio waves. Yes, and I still don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it, but it is what it is. Yeah. So. So anyway. Um, it's radio wave. Okay, gotcha. It's radio gotcha. silent. It's radio dark. So the backside of the moon took a lot of the late hip bombardment um, and That's beat, nice it, beat it all up. Um, it kind of like we started the fight. And then we're like, moon, <laughs> you're like, help us, moon. <laughs> like, ah. Um, so uh, that happens. Eventually it cools off enough again. And we have this like nice thin um, crust. But now we have lava flows that we do have, have some nice lava flows through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but it's not like, it's not volcanic like we picture vulc volcanism now, because that comes from tectonics and we oh. don't have that yet. Like um, uh, the volcanics of the, the system. Um, so uh, eventually, though, the mantle cools off enough that it's not like crazy hot and the crust is crazy cool. They're closer in temperature, right? Okay. Enough that we can get things floating and sinking in it, right? Um, so we get the first tectonics beginning to form, and that changes a lot of stuff, mm. right? It gets it um, allows for the resurfacing. Um, it resurfacing. provides of the earth, right? The earth can recycle its surface. Okay. Right, which makes a lot of the science hard because like those rocks are gone now. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, it's like shedding skin. Yeah, but it, except inside. 
Ew. <laughs> if you could slurp your dead skin cells inside you and then turn them into new skin cells, it would be very accurate. That sounds pretty efficient. That sounds gross. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like an infection. So, um, <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, tectonics begin doing their thing. Um, actually, I think before tectonics, really, um, we probably started to get our atmosphere and water. And um, most of that have been baked off. How do we get water? I don't know where. Uh, it's so pretty much all the water and air on Earth came from outside of the Earth after the Earth had formed. All the oxygen and all the water. What do you mean water, outside of the Earth? All the oxygen, all the water, a lot of the carbon. Why did um, I ask? Is, is um, extraterrestrial in origin. What do you mean? Well, so when the Earth first forms, it's so hot, it just cooks it off. Or the sun, the solar rays blast it away. Are you talking about ice that got too close and melted and became water? Yeah, from bits of things. So like um, a small uh, meteor hits, boop, and it's got some volatiles in it. Most meteors um, have a lot of volatiles in them. They have a lot of water bound up in um, That certain, came from where? Um, remember uh, that stuff way out on the edges? that was just slowly coming towards the sun mm. and hadn't made it yet. The same thing happened with the late heavy bombardment. Things had finally caught up and as they were collapsing in because they initially started way out there. But the water couldn't have begun when the sun was forming. Yeah. It was too hot. Well, no, it formed on the far reaches. Oh. Like the Oort cloud is just ice, right? Yeah, that's hot. It was, cause real, it was real cold. And so there. things start to glob together, but a lot slower. The farther out you get from the sun, the longer it takes for you to build, right? We because have a your lot orbit's of, huge. We have a lot of water, though. We do. It probably took a long time. Um, but, if it, you know, and there was probably a lot more out in the outer reaches. Like, you know how, how Pluto is technically in four chunks because it's far away from the sun? And so it takes longer for things to accrete and glob together to form their planetary system. Is that how we get the heart? What? The heart of Pluto? No, no, no. It's like Pluto, Haumea, Maki, Maki, and Eris are the four chunks that will make a planet eventually. Oh. That's why Pluto's not a planet. So, because um, it's in four pieces. That is so, not why it's not a planet, it is actually. True. It is. It's because it doesn't clear its orbit. Yeah. Of those four pieces. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. It's in four chunks, and they're huge chunks. That's why it's not a planet, because it's in four pieces. And and like, well, when like, those four pieces come together, that we thing will were be a, a planet, planet before Thea hit us. Well, yeah, but Thea sideswiped us. Yeah. But also, I believe we weren't. I believe we were considered a protoplanetary body. Oh. Anyway, um, so uh, the farther out you get from the sun, the longer it takes for you to finish building. And so the icy stuff, really, really far out there is probably still forming. And as it forms, it starts to fall in, right? Um, you know, if it's not in a nice equilibrium. Mm -hmm. um, and so when that stuff started raining down onto the earth, it would like melt instead. Earth was big enough that it could like let it hit and stick instead of like bouncing it off or making a chunk. Earth had enough gravity to hold it down. And when it melted, Earth had enough gravity, the gases wouldn't escape now. And so we form mm. an atmosphere, we form an ocean, we form, but it's probably like really flat. Any terrain Earth is features, flat. Earth, Earth was very <laughs> smooth at the time. <laughs> Earth, Earth is not flat. Earth was smooth. You heard it here at Local um, Observatory. <laughs> well, uh, and again, you know, yeah. I, I've pointed this out on previous podcasts. I'll point mm. it again. Mm -hmm. Earth is flat if you are moving fast enough because that's how relativity works. Anyway. Um, so from a photon's perspective, the universe is flat because <laughs> it's moving at the speed of light. Anyway, um, so it's just like, you know, what's your point of view, man? Um, <laughs> that's just like, put your yourself opinion, in someone man. else's shoes, like what? a photon, like a photon. Um, anyway, so, uh, the earth was probably quite smooth. So any terrain features would have been from the heavy bombardment like making big craters and stuff. There okay. was nothing to create mountains. There was nothing to create basins. There was nothing to make. Um, anything to poke up um, from this, like, nice, smooth surface. Okay. Right? Um, we might get some, like, wrinkling, you know, as things cool. Like, they tend to wrinkle up and look weird. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, eventually, tectonics are able to form. Okay. When the mantle cools enough 
<laughs> and then we start to get them pushing together and pulling apart. We get big rift basins like in Africa. And we get like um, big mountain chains kind of pushing together and poking out like in the like Himalayas. Like in Flagstaff. Um, Flagstaff is a, a volcanic feature. Oh, um, and that's right. Those are also due to tectonic movement, right? As mm -hmm. um, things subduct, there's like this back arc basin that kind of moves away and allows um, the heat from the mantle to be closer to the surface and make little volcanoes. We also get hot spots underneath. Um, we get cool island chains and all the fun stuff. And you said something interesting to me once about iron. So mm -hmm. iron, most of the iron, mm -hmm. where can you find iron? And how can you make it? How can you find iron? Well, first, how can how can iron be made? Um, I don't think you can make it via radioactive decay in any meaningful way. So um, generally, the heart of a dying star. And the iron in our blood. Most of that would be, pretty much all of that would be from, from a dying star somewhere. Right. Um, as it is now. So like yeah. obviously everything that we're looking at is technically from the heart of a dying star because it well, ended up here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like you know what I'm trying point, to say? Well, because like a, there are a lot of elements that would not have formed in the dying star. They would have formed during the early Earth or they oh, would have okay. formed during mm -hmm. the birth of, the, of the, the birth of our star or they would have formed from decay, right? Um, but only iron, not our sun, but the sun before it that spat all the stuff yeah. out. There's that's some fun where this elements iron that, that have to come from that process. That's in our blood. Mm -hmm. So it's that old. Yeah. It's just been recycled yeah. and used for different things. Mm -hmm. That's why. It's I red. That's, that's why barns cool. are red. Huh? Hmm? That's, <laughs> why, that's why barns are red. Because it's like a super common element to be the last thing a star forms before it, it dies. So it makes a lot of it. So iron's pretty common in the universe. Um, and then when a star first forms, there's going to be a lot of iron in that solar nebula and it's going to push it out because it doesn't want to use it um and so the the a lot of planets will form with iron um, which makes it super common rust is just iron oxide so once you eventually get oxygen into the system um it's going to make rust rust is red so rust was an initial red paint pigment that was very very cheap to make which is why barn paint is red you're welcome. Wow. Uh, what an enri enriching fact. Shut up. Is that, I mean, and that's also why we painted our blood red. Like an That's Alice why we Wonderland. painted our blood red. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Checks out. Yep. Um, so I guess any last fun earth facts? Fun earth facts. Um, Not a conspiracy one. It's fine, I guess. Um <laughs> I mean, it's where all my stuff it's is. It's probably my yeah. It's probably my favorite planet because we have lasagna, but and cats and cats. My dog, Ember. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know any interesting, interesting Earth facts. Um, my my question: Mars mm -hmm. being a previous Earth, is Mars like a look into our future, or are they two different? Of Venus, Venus and Mars are both looks into our future from one direction or the other. Okay. Venus is what happens if you don't get climate under control. Um, and then Mars is like uh, what happens if you lose your magnetic field. <laughs> Hopefully that won't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, eventually, right? Mars ran its course. Um, but, but it's further but away. Venus was an accelerated process mm -hmm. because of its, its very, very thick uh, clouds. Mm-hmm. Well, the sun will probably explode before we get there, right? Which one? Any of those things happen. I mean, one of them is, is like up to us. Uh, and the other one is like, yeah, we just wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's leave off on this uplifting <laughs> note. This has been John Compton and Cody Half Moon with Star Stuff. Thank you for watching. This podcast was made possible by our members and donors. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support our nonprofit in making more digital education like this available, go to lowell.edu slash donate. Thanks for listening.